feet and grab your Bibles and turn with me to the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter number three. Now, sometimes you just can't make this stuff up. Even if you try to, it's, it's, it, it, it baffles me. God constantly blows my mind. You can feel like you're off course and don't know where you're going and God is just say something. And just let you know that you, you're in the right place. And, and I want to encourage you that if you're gifted by God and you're struggling, just go ahead and take a step. Because somebody else needs to see your gift in action. Amen. Your gift will help someone else. Uh, Sister Bettina, I appreciate you this morning. I'm going to read one verse and you can sit down and we're going to see what the Lord has to say to us. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 1. The writer Ben Solomon says, To everything there is a season, and to a time, to every purpose under heaven. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Solomon says, to everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. Uh, I want to talk to you from the topic, it's time. Oh, Jesus. It's, 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 it blows my mind. Uh, I, I want to speak for about 20 minutes, it's time. And if you're taking notes, I want you to write this down uh, on your paper. Uh, it's time. Now, it's time for what? I don't know what God has been dealing with you on, but I'm here to tell you today that it is time. I don't know what God's been saying to you in your secret place. I don't know what God's been talking to you. I don't know what mission, what assignment, what purpose you've been called to. But I'm here to tell you today, it's time. It's time. Uh, this verse of scripture is very interesting in itself. Uh, you guys know me. I like to um, read and I like to define certain words. So if you will go with me for a minute before we um, go ahead and start the clock. I, I, I want to be running today. <laughs> uh, I won't be here long, but I feel like running. I'm telling you, I feel like running. You... Have you ever been pushed by somebody? I, I, Pastor Rod, I feel like I'm just getting over the crest of the top of the hill. Yes, yes, yes. And, and now I'm on, you know how you, you, when you, you got any runners in the house that run hills? And when you get to the crest, you're like, man, I'd be glad when I get up this hill. <laughs> Lord, have memory. You got to dig in, you got to drop your head, and you, you got to start pulling, and you start, a, a Marine know what I'm talking about, nobody else knows. Hey, 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 Marine buddy, you remember when you used to run those hills and you had to drop your head? Your, your, your cadence man would say, hey, I'm not going to call cadence because I can't even breathe right now because we're going up this hill. And he just say, drop your head and dig in. Come on. Come on. Wow. I remember like yesterday, we was in Korea, and you tell the soldiers, drop your head and dig in. And I would just say a word every once in a while, left. <laughs> left. <laughs> just keep everybody on step. I, I feel like I've been on step for a while. I feel like I've been staying in cadence just for a season. But I feel like I'm, I'm about to go over the top of the hill. Uh, and, and it's something that when you get to the top of the hill, you, you begin to say, you take deeper breaths. But I'm breaking the top of the hill, and I feel like when I get to the top of the hill, I'm, I feel like I'm there, but somebody's going to push me and accelerate me down the hill. I feel like a push is coming. Have you ever been in there when you needed a push? Sometimes we need a pull. But I'm telling you, a push is coming. Tell your neighbor, it's time. It's time. The writer says to everything, there is a season. This word season in the Hebrew means a appointed time. Not just any season. Uh, we are used to seasons. We're used to the four seasons. Uh, some people like the winter. We got any lovers of the winter in here? Just two or three of y'all? Some people like the spring and the spring lovers. Some people like the summer. Some of us like the fall. 
But each one of them is just a season. And in the Hebrew word, it is an appointed time. Not a different season, but an appointed time. And, and as I was wrestling with God, I was like, hold on a second, God. Uh, are you telling me that as I understand seasons, we, in, in, in the kingdom of God, I don't move from the fall to the winter, from the winter to the spring, or the spring to the summer? No, you, it, it's an appointed season. Uh, wherever you are in life, God has established an appointed season. And we have to begin to understand that in that appointed season, it's time. you understand more here in a minute. And then he says, in. That word stopped me because I heard Minister Nedra preach and teach this thing called conjunction. And so it's not a separation. And I was wrestling with God when I first got the assignment because I said, oh, we're going to preach about the summer. We're going to preach about the winter. We're going to preach about the times of God. But he said to everything that is appointed season, appointed time, and a time. This word times in the Hebrew means a unit of time, a segment of time, a space in time. Stay with me. For that means... I was wrestling. I said, okay, Lord, what are you saying? He says, well, there is a season in a point in time. And then there is a unit of time in the same season. I said, oh, hold on a second. But what that really means, brother, that I don't care how much you like the winter. You can put on your Tims. You can put on four or five pair of pants. And you can put on three or four, five, six coats in a hat. But if you walk outside in the middle of June, it's not going to take very long that you find out that you are dressed for the wrong season. And it won't take very long when you begin to decide that you're going to take some layers off. And God begins to show me that it doesn't matter the season. You have confused seasons as men think about seasons. I see season as a time where I place you. I place you right where you are. In that very season that you're in. Our God, by my hand and by my wisdom, took you and put you in that season. And I place you there for a unit of time. The friend of the writer says, in the end of this, he says, to every purpose under heaven. Now, I have always defined this word purpose as the reason for which something is done or created. Or for which something exists. And I was going to preach it as that. And I wrote all of these pages out. <laughs> Typing. <laughs> There's something that stop. And define the word purpose. I don't have to define the word purpose. I know exactly what that means. That literally means for a reason for which something is done. Or for some, something is created. I don't know what purpose means. But in the Hebrew, in the original text, in which the writer wrote this word purpose, it is defined as desire. And I said, uh-oh. And then the title came, It's Time. And then he began to show me what he was talking about. What happens to us as believers, we are waiting on a certain season. We were, we were waiting on a certain time, a unit of time, Sunday morning, Tuesday night, to praise the living God. But we haven't recognized that the very season that we're in, God has placed us there. And he's placed us there for a unit of time. For a divine desire that we've been asking God for. We've been asking God, seeking God, wanting something from God. And but we have not realized that we're in the season we're in, God will bless you right there. And the stress you in. That is a divine season. For a space of time. 
to create a desire for God. The writer says, a time to be born. A, a season for birthing. A unit of time to give birth. Birth in the natural, as I understand it, is not a pleasant thing. Any women ever had a baby? I'm told that it's painful. I'm told that it can be quick or it can be long. Y'all got any, y'all didn't catch that. It can be a quick birth or it can be a long process. But yet at the end, birth took place. And what we have to understand that a time to be born is a season in which God placed me. There may be trouble in this season. There may be difficulties in this season. But I've been placed in this season by God. For a unit of time to create the desire I've been praying for. Man, I wish y'all could feel this. It's time. Tell your neighbor, it's time. What have you been praying to God for? What have you been seeking God for? I'm here to tell you it's time. Time is right now. The very season you in has been established by God. The very place you in right now, you've been placed there by the hand of God. For space and time, whether it be a day, an hour, or two minutes, or thirty years. Abraham prayed to God. I, I want a child, a man child. His very desire was the birth of Isaac. So God placed him in a place for a space of time. To create his very desire. The problem we have as believers. We have discredited the seasons we're in. We want to go from. We always, when is it my season? When is it my time? You have misplaced God. You have thought of the scriptures wrong. Because God established the season. God established the time because God has a divine purpose. The very desire you seek, we think it's for us. But God is building your desire to help someone else. Seasons. And what happens to us? It's summertime, but we, we dress like it's winter. It's winter time, but we dress like it's summer. It's fall, but we dress like it's spring. It's spring, but we dress like it's fall. And we don't understand that in the midst of a winter storm, right in the midst of a winter blizzard, the greatest snowfall in history God place me right there. Why would God, in all of his infinite wisdom, put me, a man that don't like winter, in the middle of a winter storm? Why would God take you and put you in a place you don't even like? With a people you don't even like. In a city you don't even like. Why would God take you. 
and place you right in the middle of a season that you don't even care for. He said he loved me. <laughs> he, he said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. He said, I'm the apple of his eye. I don't like wintertime. I, I, actually, I wish the season didn't even exist. <laughs> Give me three summers and one spring. I'm okay. In the wintertime, my... What happens is, because I ask the Spirit of God, I'm just talking now, as God leads me. Why would you take me, the man you say you love? The man that's been crying out, preaching the word of God, living holy, testifying about the power of God and how you changed my life. Why would you take me and put me in the middle of the world? You know I don't like where. But you say you love me. When he put me in winter, the first thing that happens, my attitude turns negative. Y'all ain't going to hear me today, huh? My attitude turns bad when it gets cold. I don't even want to get out of bed. I don't want to go see nobody. I don't want nobody to come see me. It's too cold out here. Go on. I'm just talking about me. Wife got to go somewhere. You got to go out and warm the car. You get up mad. Cause somebody might get. That's your wife. You supposed to get up. Let's talk to you. That's your wife. You should get up. In fact, if you understood seasons, that's three elements in every season. Write this down. Three elements in every season. This is why we don't get what we want. If you get this, I'm telling you something. I've been holding this for about two or three weeks. If you get this, the next time you pray to God, before daybreak, the mailman will be at your door. And you order something from heaven. I'm breaking it first class. There's three elements of every season. Three. There is the purpose of the season. See, I like when God just deal with me. Give me flashbacks. See, when I put you in the winter, you don't even want to win. In the summertime, you at work 30 minutes prior. If anybody know me, I get, I get to work early. I tell my wife, I'm late. She said, are you late by check-in time? Or are you late by your time? Oh, my time. Check-in time ain't for another two hours. <laughs> oh, 
Because in the summer, I wake up with purpose. In the summer, I wake up with drive. Because I declared to be my season. <laughs> okay, yeah. Ain't nobody never declared your season. But you're declaring your season in the wrong season. See, it's easy for me to get up tomorrow. It's summertime, baby. I don't have a problem getting out an hour early. Why? Because think what's happening here. Check this out. I just, you just got something from God. In your season, you settle for your blessings. But in this season, there is a divine blessing. The one you've been laboring for for years. That I have handcrafted. That I have set aside just for you. In your season, you get up early. You show up early. So I show up early on the job. And it's, I develop favor. God give me favor with the guy. He go ahead and sign me in. And I'm like, oh, I'm blessed. My seed. Sit there for about an hour, two hours. Haven't busted a grape in a fruit fight. <laughs> Have done nothing. Just on the clock making money. <laughs> Calling myself blessed. I'm in my season now. And God said, so you see how happy you get? When you get just an extra two hours. I got 200 hours over here in this season. I got 2,000 hours in this season. I have a blessing that you don't even have room for. I'm trying to find somebody else to bless. Because what I shape for you in this season, you can't even handle. Purpose. The second thing that has to happen in every season that you have to identify is priorities. Purpose. Why am I in this season? Why would God take a country boy that hates snow and put him in Korea where it snows six months of the year? See, what happens to the believer, the reason we're not really ready, is we forget early in life God's been working on us on. for this season. He told Jeremiah, before I knew you, I formed you, I shaped you. I created in you a prophet to the nations. You know what kind of lifestyle he had to live as a little boy to be a prophet in the Old Testament before God? God would kill a man. Literally. Y'all remember the story of, of the young prophet? They got tricked by the old prophet. He got the will of God. But he got out of season. God let a lion or some animal devour him. And I said, God, why would you kill the man? Because I have a divine season. In a divine time. To create a desire for you. That I gave to you as a young boy. You have to begin to understand. The priorities in every season. The fact or conditions. Are being regarded to as treated. As something important. You have to know why you in the season you in. You have to know. The reason you're struggling finances. In your finances. You have to instead of seeking God. For a different season. We need to understand why we in this season. Because this is what I know. You will not leave a season God has ordained for you. Until God is ready. Until you are ready. <laughs> and the only way you're going to get ready is to understand the purpose. Why would God, who loves all of his creations, let a man suffer financially? Let a man get to a place where he's about to lose everything that he owns. Why would God put a man in a position to ask for something? He loves him. He's trying to teach him something in that season. To bring him to a different season. And when he changed form, what have he learned in this season? Oh, I'm in the kingdom of God. If I want to be a financial steward in the kingdom of God, then I have to be a manager of my assets. 
no matter how small or how large. And I had to learn that in my broke season. I had to learn that in my begging season. I had to learn that in my crying season, in my weeping season. Because if I don't learn it, I'm going to stay there for a unit of time. God showed me something. He said, see, you're trying to skip the order. You forget our God. I ordained everything. Everything that was, everything that is, and everything is to come. I allowed it all purposely. And you trying to take your gift and create room for yourself. But since you have aligned with me and you have committed to me, I can't allow you to just do anything. Now, if you decommit, you're on your own. That's how the wicked get blessed. They don't commit to God. They let their gifts do the thing. And what's interesting about God is when you commit to God, the season that you're in is not really for you. Because true wealth in the kingdom is distributed amongst the kingdom. And what God needs to bless somebody who will help the kingdom. You need help, you need help, you need help. I, I got a little bit, you need help. I ain't got a whole lot, but what I have, you have access to. He said, if you learn that in your broke season, I can transition you to your design season. Because in your design season, I won't have to push you real hard to go help somebody else in business. I can just speak it. Bless somebody to do what you're trying to do. And you immediately start looking. You're in the right season. So a seed. That's not easy to do. You give. All you have. You're in the right season. Purpose. You have to learn the purpose of the season in which you're in. Let me go back to that just one second. Number one. When God showed me he placed me in winter. It was an attitude adjustment for me. See, a lot of times for us, as believers, our situation dictates our attitude. Our situation dictates our praise. Our situation dictates, are we going to live holy or not? Situation dictates, we'll be on church. I'm going to church, I'm not going to church. Situation dictates, will I be a Bible study or will I not be a Bible study? Situation dictates, will I get up and pray or will I not get up and pray? Situation dictates what I pass when the church calls a fast. My situation dictates what I do for God. And the reason that season is so long, it's so long and that unit of time keeps increasing because your attitude is wrong. When you adjust your attitude, God gets excited. When I adjust my attitude, see, I know it's five degrees outside. I mean, I'll get that in a minute. I'm getting ahead of myself. You got to understand the purpose. You got to understand the priority. And then you have to understand the plan. <laughs> I'm going to ask a question amongst the brother. Don't raise your hand. How many of y'all have next week already planned out? I ain't even going to look at you. How many know what time you praying tomorrow? How many know what time you studying the word tomorrow? How many know what you're doing Tuesday morning? Do you have to be reminded of the fast or somebody needs to text you? How many know what you're doing on Wednesday for God? What time are you praying on Thursday? What time are you studying the word? Where are you going to be Friday morning at 5.30? Oh, no. Okay, nobody. Right. Okay, what time do you go to work tomorrow? Anybody here don't know? Oh, everybody knows that. What time is your lunch break tomorrow? Oh, okay. What time you clock out tomorrow? 
Okay. All right. How are you getting to work in the morning? It's also okay. You have all of that plan. And I ain't just talking to you. I'm, I'm, he, he, he stumbled me three weeks ago. That's why I grabbed my books. I'm living by a plan the rest of my life. The reason we stay in the winter season so long is because eventually we begin to figure out that, okay, God, I must be doing something wrong. And most of Christians come to a belief or they begin to recognize, Pastor Rod, if I'm in a season too long, there's something wrong with me. Amen. Anybody ever been there? Amen. If I stay in a season too long, I know there's something wrong with me. Amen. And I begin to go down the list. Did I pray this morning? Did I fast? Did I read? Did I study? Did I say hi to my neighbor? Did I treat my loved ones like I treat myself? I, I go down the list. Is there any sin in me? And if I can check the list off, something's going on. Come on. If my list is clean, I'm in violation of scripture somewhere. I misunderstood what God said. And so I go to the source. Say, Lord, look at here. This is going on too long. I'm, I'm talking too long. First you go humble. My wife always go humble. This is my humble approach to God. Judge me if you want to. Lord, it's me, oh God. Standing in the need of an answer. That's just how I go. You go how you want to go. I just know he know me. And he, he, he quickly speaks. Ecclesiastes chapter 3. That's all he says. You beating heaven go for 45 minutes. Ecclesiastes <laughs> chapter 3, <laughs> verse 1. <laughs> Judge me if you want to. I'm just looking at your peek into my life. People say, well, you don't pray long. Well, God answered in the first 30 seconds. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out who time am I wasting here? <laughs> Let me take you home here. <laughs> I think I'll wrap all this up. Because I was standing in need of something. I've been battling with something, been wrestling with something for a long time. I'm, I'm, I'm going to give you this and I'm going to get you out of here. So all this ties up. I'm, I'm, I'm wrestling with God. And I'm understanding the word of God says that give and it shall be given. Good measure, pressed down, shaking together. Some man give unto your bosom. And I understand that by that principle, by that law, by that scripture, as I give, somebody will give. Mm -hmm. And I'm applying the scripture, but ain't nobody giving. I'm like, see, what, what happens is, for some of us, God can deal with. For some of us, he can say, hey, what you pray for, I have a list. You pray for your desire. Now, if you want Luke 6 and 38 to come to pass, I can do that too. But you said you wanted this. You wanted to do this, and you would do this for me. Anybody ever done that? God, you do this, I'll do this for you. God, you do this, I'll do this for you. God, you do this, I'll do this for you. And he reminded me of my prayers. He said, so, what I have to do is I have to get you to understand the purpose of the season that you're currently in. There is a reason why there's conflict in your family. I have an established purpose there. And you're going to stay there until you understand the purpose. You're not coming out. I'm talking for those who are sold out to God. If you're not there yet, hopefully you'll get there before this message is over. I'm trying to teach you how to get whatever you want. And God has revealed a secret to me. You're not coming out until you find out why you are in winter. Apostle, it calls for a self examination. So I had to lay myself out on the altar. What's wrong with me, oh God? Number one, your attitude is condemned.
professional. Okay, God. I'm broken now. I might as well just give up. How do I fix it? Take on the attitude of Christ. Go read Matthew chapter 4. What was his attitude when he was tempted in the forest? He had attitude was focused on the omission, the assignment, the plan, the goal. He had no other focus. Let me show you what that meant to me. Because this is where most of us get in trouble. God, I want the six figures if I can get a bigger house. God, I, I want the six figures if I can get a bigger car. God, I want the six figures to floss a little bit. Nobody's going to clap on that. That's all right. Let me break it down a little bit further. God, I want it if I can do what I want to do. And under those conditions, you'll never get it. Let me get close to home. Lord, I don't want to be single no more because I have this burning desire in the flesh. Mr. Right ain't coming, but Mr. Wrong will show up. If you're in a season and you're trying to purpose that season for what you want, you're in the wrong season. And you're going to stay in the wrong season until you go to God, lay out before God, and say, oh God, it is me. What's wrong with me? Notice, I'm not talking about wrong sins. Me and the brothers talked this morning about more decisions. I'm laying before God, as best I know, the righteous man. A holy man. I should be able to get anything I want. I didn't know my attitude was conditional. I think sometimes we know we just don't want to ingest. That never happened to none of y'all. Right? Sometimes you know what you want. You're striving for what you want. You're staying right where you are until you get what you want. But it's for you. It's for your purpose. You have to trans, transition over to the purpose in Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 1. This purpose, the word is divine, it says, desire. This desire is twofold. This desire is God's desire, which once we mature as saints, which we're going to talk talking about a little bit, a lot lately, coming up. Once we mature and saint in Christ, my desire become his desires. Yes, and his desires become my desires. And by pleasing him, I get what I want. Are you with me? That's right. That's right. I know the couple of ministers, they get it. Right. They're trying to teach us in the marriage classes. Look, you have to fulfill the desire of your wife, and your wife has to fulfill the desires of you. I don't feel like it. I don't want to. Well, since you don't want to, then your wife will not fulfill your desires and you will not fulfill her desires and nobody's desires get met. Everybody's getting frustrated. And when there's frustration, the devil gets excited. Show me some frustration. The devil get, just gets happy. I'm finna tear something up. But when you understand that, God, give me your desires. What is it you want me to do? Why are you going to bless me? Why are you going to free me? Why are you going to let me get married? Why are you going to give me a gentle job? Why, 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 oh God? For the purpose of others. And in that state, I have to learn my priorities in my winter season. Notice something about the season. Seasons change with us, not with God. 
God is not subject to a winter storm. God is not subject to 90 degree, 100 degree weather. God is not subject to the beautiful time of fall. God is not subject to spring flowers and rainstorms. God is only subject to God and what he had purposed in our life. We have to find out what is my priorities in my winter storm. Check this out. He said, look, your attitude is kind of subject to how the wind blow. You don't say a whole lot, but I'm God, remember. I know every thought. I know what you're thinking before you say it. And just because you got a smile on your face, I know your attitude. I'm like, Lord, I expose myself to you. He says, so in the winter, what you have to do is when it's negative three, you still got to have the same attitude as when it's 105. You get up at 3 o'clock in the morning in the summer, get up at 3 o'clock in the morning in the winter. Get up at 3 o'clock in the morning in the spring. Get up at 3 o'clock in the morning in the fall. Keep and stay on purpose. And if you will stay on purpose, you will stay on task, then, then I will begin to change the season in the season you're in. I don't need a rainstorm to bless you. I'll bless you right in the middle of winter. I'm God. And I call the winds from the east, west, north, and south. I create whatever season I want to. He said, you, so you have to understand. That you have to begin to set priorities. And I said, God, what's my biggest problem? What, what's really happening? He said, see, you know discipline. And I have to go, he talked to me. He said, since you understand discipline. I said, well, church ain't never taught me on discipline. He says to me, Jeremiah 1, chapter verse 5. He go back to his keyboard. I go to Jeremiah 1 and 5, read it. Oh, before I form you, I knew you. Then he says, I created, watch this, in you. So, so back there in those days, I put discipline in you. You thought the military was your decision. But it was my plan. And what you have done is you have created a plan. Now what you must do to attain what you want in any season. You must change out plans. You must find the plan of God. And the way you find the plan of God is you begin to study the word of God. And if it's about helping other people, you can ensure God is in there somewhere. If what you want is about helping the kingdom, helping kingdom people, you can bet God is in it. I know I got to close this thing up. I just feel like we, we, we have to get to a place where we understand that whatever I desire, it has to be other people focus. You know me. I mean, God got me cut open now. I see it. I said, hey, Lord, uh, I have need of some things. He said, well, you heard it said, if you take care of my house, I'll take care of your house. I said, well, I ain't never read it in the text. This is just my prayer. This is how I talk to God. This is just me. He said, uh, you may not have read it in the text, but it doesn't make sense. We're talking about decisions this morning, right, brother? Does that make sense? Does, does that seem like the right thing to do? Since you're a kingdom man, does it make sense to help other people? Amen. Since you call yourself a kingdom man, does it make sense to put other people first? Since you call yourself a kingdom man, does it make sense to love others as you love yourself? I said, yes, Lord. He said, now get up. And go get what I told you. It's time. It's time. I don't know if you believe that. I don't know where you're at. But I'm telling you, it is time. You, purpose, priority, plans. Purpose, priority, plans. Purpose, priority, plans. I don't care what season you're in. You can be in a middle of a divorce. There is a purpose. 
You must take priorities and you must plan according to the word of God, according to the will of God. And if you'll do that, that season will be prosperous. Stand all over the church. I probably can go about another four hours. I really could. Because in verse 2 he talks about a time to be born and a time to die and a time to plan and a time to pluck. Plan, priority, purpose. Even in a season to die that God has established, there is a purpose. Y'all can't stay here four hours. I'm going to juggle. But this is what we have to understand. God does not work by seasons as we see it. You're not looking for your season. You're in your season. Hey, brother, Pastor James, don't look. You're in your season right now. But I'm in the middle of a hurricane. You're in the right season. I'm on the mountaintop. You're in the right season. I'm having trouble with my kids. You're in the right season. You have to find the purpose of that season. You have to create priorities in that season. And you have to plan. Plan and plan. 